Sea Turtle Recovery is a separate nonprofit that's within the Essex County Turtleback Zoo. We've been around since 2014. So when we founded our company, we started building our board of directors. It started with outreach and education. Uh, we still needed a building to do the rehab work. So uh, the Turtleback Zoo approached us and said, we will offer you guys a building and help with utility costs and you stay a nonprofit and raise money for the turtles, the vet care, the food, the medicine. We have an ICU unit, that would be for any sea turtle that has an illness or a disease that could possibly spread or needs quiet and um, sensitive care, we would be able to, to house them there. We also have uh, these four tanks um, behind me. They're able to hold a number of species and a number of sizes, depending on shell length, depends how many we can hold, but, but all of them um, are able to, to house sea turtles. They suffer from things like respiratory infections, injuries, uh, whether it's fishing related or boating related. Sometimes they get hit by boats or propellers. Sometimes they swallow fishing hooks. And just regular illness, pneumonias and things like that. So those are things that we can treat. Those are things that we can help with and get these turtles back out into the wild so they can contribute to the population. The length of recovery depends. Um, some sea turtles just need a couple months to recover. Other sea turtles can face years of treatment and rehabilitation, but that's when you, you really see the fight in them. They, they don't give up. They never give up. We can get a variety of different cases here at our facility. Um, they could swallow plastic, thinking it's their, one of their favorite treats, jellyfish. Um, they could get hit by boats. The ones we have currently, um, we're in the Cape Cod Bay in Massachusetts. The bay stays warmer than the ocean temperature, and so as the cold currents move down our coast, they push the warm water down farther south. However, these sea turtles were in the bay and didn't get the cue to migrate. As the bay got colder, they started to try to migrate out. However, they were trapped by those cold water currents. They stop eating and sadly um, develop hypothermia. They can have pneumonia, um, and they wash ashore, and that's when we were able to help them. As co-executive officer of Sea Turtle Recovery, there's only two of us and the two vets, so I do, we do everything. We're the grant writers, we're the fundraisers, we're the website designers, we're the Facebook people, we're the vet techs, we're the cleaning crew, we do everything. We're the press crew, we do it all. We definitely couldn't do this without the help of volunteers and all the people who sponsor us and all the people who have supported us through grants and other fundraisers. Without them, there, there wouldn't be a sea turtle recovery. It's a group effort, and we consider sea turtle recovery more of a family than a nonprofit because it's all of us working together that helps save these animals. And our board members and our volunteers, they're just as committed and as passionate as we are. And these sea turtles have a way of just grabbing your heart and not letting go. Even after they're released, you just always think about them, and they, they always carry a piece of you with them in the ocean. Two of the most interesting cases that we've had was an adult female loggerhead turtle that was rescued by the U.S. Coast Guard cutter Lawrence Lawson off the coast of Delaware. She came in, she was found struggling at the surface with um, over 38 pounds of barnacles, mussels, and mud on her back. When we got her to our hospital and we cleaned her, her shell off, we got all those barnacles off her, we found she'd been hit by a boat. She had seven propeller strikes down her back um, and she's healed and done tremendously recovering from that. We also had a small juvenile loggerhead uh, that had had some sort of entanglement with fishing line or monofilament or netting of some sort um, and also a hook injury to his mouth that caused an infection in his jawbone. And again, this turtle healed tremendously and was eating right away uh, and just done great in rehab. One of the most rewarding parts of our job is to release these turtles back to the ocean. Once they're healed and they're healthy and ready to go back, um, it's amazing to see them get excited as you get close to the water when you arrive at the beach and they smell that salt air. Um, and they hear the ocean and they get excited. Um, and then to set that turtle down and watch him swim off in the, into the ocean, it's just an incredibly rewarding feeling and it, it never gets old. It's amazing to watch them when they're, when they're finally ready to go. You, you start to see their passion in their eyes. They start to smell the salt water and the, the minute they, they touch the sand, some of them do take a minute to, to get their bearings and others just jet to the water. But you can just see the appreciation in their eyes and know that they're home and they're where they need to be. We are a nonprofit, which means we rely on donations and grants and public support for the majority of our costs. The zoo does help us. They provided the building and they help us with utility costs. Uh, the rest of it is on us, food, medicine, vet care. All that comes from donations and grants. 
So just public support, whether they want to donate to help pay for costs or following us on Facebook, sharing us, spreading the word about sea turtles and our organization, that all comes into play and helps us in the long run. I've always had a passion for marine life. There's constant battles to fight pollution and keeping the environment clean. So, and again, these turtles are all threatened or endangered, which means we may not have them very much longer. So we really need to do a lot to help these animals. Uh, the Kemp's Ridley, again, is the, is the critically endangered, which means they may be gone in just a few short generations. The inspiration to open the center, for me, since I was five years old, I wanted this. And I was a girl from Indiana in the cornfields. And so a lot of people thought I was a little bit crazy. But when you know you were born for something, you follow your dream and, and you don't let anybody tell you you're crazy. You don't let anybody tell you it's, it's the wrong thing to do. And so I've spent my life working with marine mammals and sea turtles and, and I'll be at the end working with marine life and sea turtles. It's, it's a passion, it's a drive and, and these animals need it and deserve it.